I'm Laura Horak, and I'm a graduate student in film studies. Can everyone hear me in the back? Okay. So I'm giving a talk called, Billy's real name is Edna, cross-gender casting and silent film. The notion that an actor's gender dictate the gender of her film roles is not a natural and inevitable practice, but a convention that developed haphazardly during the first decades of cinema. Though rarely addressed in silent film scholarship, Cross-gender casting was prominent from the 1890s through the early 1920s, as the new medium strove to define itself in relationship to theater, opera, and vaudeville. During cinema's earliest years, men often played ugly or athletic women, and women <coughs> played boys and fair youths. In theater, cross-gender casting has a long history. Although men played women more often than the opposite, women too performed their share of male parts. From Charlotte Cushman and Sarah Bernhardt in the breeches roles that were popular between the 16th and 19th centuries, to male impersonators of the 19th and early 20th century vaudeville stages, like Vesta Tilly and Bessie Bonehead. In early film, cross-casting and male impersonation continued to be fairly common, with actresses playing roles like Oliver Twist, or the, the aristocratic sisters raised as boys in the Amazons. And sadly, this is a lost film. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Usually, when female-bodied actors played male parts, the film signaled this to the audience with feminizing makeup or a medium close-up that allowed the audience to inspect the actor's face and body. However, in the case of Edna, also known as Billy Foster, audiences never knew that the plucky little boy on screen was female body. Not Foster there. In those days, film companies didn't release the names of their performers, so audiences would never suspect that little Billy also went by Edna. Foster played male roles in over 15 short films in the early teens at the Biograph Company primarily under the direction of D.W. Griffith, the director who went on to make The Birth of a Nation. Here's a couple of them. I don't know what the terrible discovery is. <laughs> <laughs> but we just <laughs> In one of Foster's films, a reviewer even praised, quote, the, the appealing and lifelike presentation of the little boy. In 1914, at what turned out to be the end of her film career, the 14-year-old Billy Foster and her older sister Flora did an interview with the Chicago Trade Journal. Flora explained to the interviewer, quote, Billy's real name is Edna, end quote. The interviewer then explained to the reader, quote, for Billy, so named because she plays the role of boy so frequently, is the rugged, strong-muscled, strong-featured one of the two. When Flora invites him to just feel Billy's muscle, he does, and proclaims, quote, it was a muscle that a boy of more than Billy's age would be proud of, <laughs> round and hard as the proverbial rock. <laughs> and Flora insisted that Billy, quote, really is just like a boy, end quote. And Billy assented, saying, they always give me boy parts, and I like them better than just being a girl. Remarkably, the interviewer doesn't flinch at Billy's insistence on her masculinity. While the athletic female stars of adventure serials during this same period were careful to insist on their off-screen femininity, Foster's youth allowed her, perhaps, to be read as a tomboy. After 1914, though, she disappears from the record, perhaps because puberty forced her out of male roles, or perhaps because her exaggerated acting style fell out of favor, or possibly she just changed her name so I can't find it. <laughs> so far, Foster is the only case I've found in which audiences were not aware of the cross-gender casting. Indeed, such successful passing means that these cases, by their very nature, cannot be found unless the performers are somehow outed. However, Foster was not the only actress to undertake successful cross-gender performance. In 1912, the New York Dramatic Mirror praised the young actress Marin Sayas as, quote, particularly good in Indian and boy parts, end quote. 
The lack of further comment suggests that readers would have been familiar with girls playing boy parts. The actress Edith Story played a series of male impersonation roles and like Foster went by the nickname Billy. Story is currently most well known for starring in the 1914 sex change farce of Florida Enchantment as a wealthy woman who swallows a seed that transforms her gender. And that's what this is from. Even before this, though, she appeared in a 1910 film adaptation of Twelfth Night, not as Viola, the girl who impersonates her twin brother, but as Sebastian, the twin brother. The fi this film reverses the Elizabethan practice of casting boys in female roles. A year later, Story starred in Billy the Kid, which was summarized in an ad as, quote, Billy is a girl, but the boys on the ranch don't know it until she is 16. Then she marries her pal. <laughs> in the ad, Billy is pictured on a horse, which allows the reader to determine if his or her gender detection is more savvy than the boys on the ranch. In my research, I have found more than 400 films that feature female to male cross dressing between 1900 and 1930. I believe that female masculinity had a more prominent space in U.S. popular culture during this period than any time since. The career of Billy Foster at the Biograph Company suggests that in early films, as in theater, the actor's gender need not determine the character's, the character's gender. Her unique example opens the door to a wider set of actresses associated with boy roles. These performers trouble the assumption that gender could be represented on film just naturally. Instead, they were conventions that developed through a process of experimentation and eventual consolidation. 